Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and what if you're not a huge tech nerd, like me, but you still want to know some hidden information about your electric car, like the battery state of health, battery temperature, and other really cool hidden information? Well, if you don't want to use an app on your cell phone that you have to pay for, like Torque Pro, or Car Scanner and the extra layouts that you would need to pay for, or you just don't want to use your cell phone at all, Fortunately, there's a big tech nerd here in the province of Quebec that invented the EV OBD2 adapter for electric cars. If you want to find out all about it, stick around. I'll show you in a few seconds. One thing to note is that if you do order one of these EV OBD2 adapters is it won't be red like mine. Now, the reason that mine is red is because I was given the privilege of receiving the STL files to print on my 3D printer because my adapter is an OG original EV OBD2 adapter from 2019 when I had my Nero EV. Now I've updated the firmware so that it works with this car and I printed a box that looks like the new one that doesn't have a little hole in the side. Now their full disclosure is I received my adapter for free because I helped Jean-Pierre Lavoie test it on my Nero EV and this newest firmware on the Kia EV6. There are two versions of the EV OBD2 that you can buy. One is a kit version that comes with everything that you've got here that we'll go over in a second. And then you've got the version that you can only get the adapter if you already have an OBD2 reader. Now, the kit version at 135 Canadian gives you a USB-C to USB-C cable. It's got a 90 degree connector on one end and a regular connector on the other, which is convenient to help you place the device in your car in a more appropriate fashion. And it's a really nice braided quality cable. So that's pretty cool. The kit version has two versions of the OBD2 reader. Now this is the Android phone version because, well, we've got an Android phone. And then you've got an OBD2 reader that's Bluetooth that's also compatible with iOS for people who have iPhones. This is the VPeak for Android. And then finally, in the $135 Canadian kit, is the actual EV OBD2 adapter itself. Now this device is super small with a little USB-C port on the bottom. And it's got two buttons in the front, but you'll only be using the button that's on this side because this is the one that lets you change the screens, which you'll see a little bit later, or reset the device if ever you want to unpair it and pair it with another OBD2 adapter. Now, like I said earlier, this is a red box that, because it makes it easier to see in the video, and I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, but that's because I printed it myself, and it was just for this video. If you order one, yours will be black. It will be printed in PETG plastic, which is better for higher temperatures and will last longer in your car. So with all of that being said and done, how does this install? What are the screens that you get to see? And what do you do with it? Let's go have a look. You're probably wondering what electric cars the EV OBD2 adapter is compatible with, and that's essentially the Hyundai Kia and Genesis group of 100% battery powered electric vehicles. Now Jean Pierre owned the 2019 Kona Electric when he invented this device, so it supports the 2019 2023 Kona Electric with a little asterisk at the end for the 2024 and newer. You'll notice that the other vehicles also have a little asterisk at the end. And what that asterisk means is because those newer versions have larger batteries and the EV OBD2 has never been tested on them, it's possible that it won't read them correctly. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't work out of the box because all of these vehicles have very similar programming, but the firmware might need some tweaking. And that's something that Jean Pia can do if you're willing to help him test it on your vehicle. If it's one of the newer versions that hasn't been tested on, feel free to reach out to Jean Pia on his website site if you're in the Montreal region of the province of Quebec in Canada. Before you can use your EV OBD2 adapter, you actually need to plug in your OBD2 adapter and that goes into the OBD2 port of your car. Now we just have to go under the dash on the EV6 right over here and you can't put this in backwards by the way, it's got a keyed thing so you just have to find the right direction. This goes towards the front of the car in this case. Right under here, and it's in. And now we can go connect this, turn it on, and show you how it works. With the OBD2 adapter connected to your car, now it's just a matter of connecting the USB-C cable that came with this when you bought it. Now there's one thing to note, when I received mine, I had something kind of weird happen when I plugged it in the first time. You'll notice on this cable that there's some writing on one side, and if you put it in one direction into the car and then in another direction into the EV OBD2 adapter, nothing happens. So it's a little bit strange. If you start by plugging this USB-C connector over here, and you make sure that the writing is facing up, 
When you connect this 90 degree connector, if you were to plug it in with the writing facing down, and then you turn on your car, it's not gonna turn on. You have to make sure that you plug it in in the other direction. So if you get this and you plug in your USB-C cable and it doesn't turn on when you turn on your car, don't panic. It's probably not defective. Chances of defectors are really low because they're all tested. Well, then it's just a matter of flipping your USB-C cable. So now that I've got it connected, let's power on the car and pair it to the EV OBD2 and the OBD2. Car turns on, EV OBD2 turns on. When you get yours, it won't be paired to anything and you'll have to pair it the first time. Now mine was already paired, so what I've done is I've paired it to another device and that's why you see a pairing mistake thing on this screen. Yours will probably have something very similar. To pair your device, what you have to do is press and hold on the left hand button like this for four seconds, two, three, four, and then when you let go, it starts to scan for OBD2 adapters with Bluetooth that are in the region. Now, if you do this in a crowded parking lot and somebody else has an OBD2 that's Bluetooth, it might detect it. So make sure you do it in a place where there are no other cars. And once it finds an OBD2 adapter, it shows you the MAC address on the screen of the device, and then it reboots, and then it'll start to connect with the adapter. Once the EV OBD2 has paired to the OBD2 adapter that's Bluetooth, and you finally get information on the screen of the device, which you can see right here. Now, just before I get to describing what all these screens do, my car has 99,030 kilometers in the last three years of driving, and one of the screens that this device shows is the battery's state of health. So my question to you, and you can put your guesses down into the comment section, is what do you think that my 2022 Kia EV6 with about 100,000 kilometers driven in three years has as a battery's state of health? Put in the comment section below, make your guess, and uh, we'll see who gets it right. Let's get to what this thing actually does. Now, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the battery state of charge, as well as the current temperature and the amount of power that's being used or put back into it. And you've got the indoor temperature of the car, which is kind of cool because nowhere in the menus of these cars can you see what the indoor temperature is. The EV OBD2 has 10 screens, and to get those various screens, all you have to do is press and hold the right button for one second, and when you release it, you get to the next screen. Now, this next screen is the average trip. What's interesting about the average trip calculation, as opposed to what the car shows you on your trip meter, is that this will calculate your average speed based on not just the speed that you've driven, but it'll even count when you stop. So if you stop for an hour and don't drive, and you leave the car powered on, well, that's going to count in your average trip. So this information is very accurate as a real-time data. Now, the next screen that you get when you press and hold this is the high-voltage battery information. That'll show you the voltage of the high-voltage battery. It'll also show you the minimum battery temperature, and the center number is the amount of power that's either being taken out or put into the battery of the car. So if you're charging, you'll see a negative, and if you're driving, you'll see a positive. Now, you also have battery heater number one in terms of temperature. That's the bottom number right there. Now the next screen that you get when you press and hold this button is the 12 volt battery. Now the 12 volt battery information is good to have because, well, let's just say that Hyundai and Kia haven't had the best of luck with 12 volt batteries. Lots of them have died in the past and that's because of the ICCU software. Well, this little device will show you the status of your 12 volt battery, whether it's being charged or not. Now the next screen that you get is the battery cells. Now this is kind of cool for people who want to get into a little more nitty-gritty details of their high voltage battery. This will show you the cell's highest voltage or the maximum cell voltage as well as the minimum cell voltage, so the cell of the battery that has the smallest amount, and it'll show you the difference of the two. Now when you've charged your battery to 100%, it should balance the cells, and that means that the top and bottom numbers will be the same, and you'll have a zero in the middle showing the difference. Now it's normal if you see differences on this, so you can have a cell that's at, let's say, 3.92 volts, and then the minimum will be at 3.90, and you'll have a difference of 0.02 volts. Don't panic, it's normal. When you charge to 100%, everything stabilizes itself, and it's all good. The next screen that you get is actually a very cool screen. Now this is the battery's actual capacity test screen. This will avoid you charging your car to 100%, driving it for a few hundred kilometers, and then doing a whole bunch of math to figure out what the actual capacity is of your battery, and even that's kind of a guesstimate. Now what's cool is that this screen, if you discharge your car from nine to 15%-ish, and then you have this set and ready to go, 
then you charge up overnight with your car turned off. And then when you turn your car on in the next morning and then this thing turns on, it'll do all the math for you and tell you what the actual usable capacity of your high voltage battery is. I thought that was a pretty cool little trick. Not 100% down to the, you know, plug it in in Korea and know exactly what it is, but it's gonna give you a pretty good idea. Very cool. The next screen that you get is the total amount of power that is charged or discharged throughout the lifetime of your vehicle. This is pretty neat because this shows that I've got about 165,000 uh, kilowatt hours of charged power and that my battery has discharged 15,700-ish kilowatt hours. And that's over the last three years that I've owned this vehicle. The next screen that you get is actually something that's gonna be quite useful for when you're on a trip. Now, this is sort of a power trip counter. So if you're going on a business trip or you're going on a family trip, whatever it is, and you wanna know exactly how much power your car has charged and discharged, well, you can reset this one. It'll have zero at both top and bottom. And then while you charge and discharge your car over that trip, well, this is just gonna give you a running total. So kind of useful information for those who like to know how much power their car is being used or not. And this next screen is a screen that a whole bunch of you have probably been waiting for, is the battery state of health. Now, I'm not sure if you've made your guess in the comment section below, but my 2022 Kia EV6 with about 100,000 kilometers driven, what did you think it was? Well, guess what? It's 100% state of health. That means that my usable battery capacity is still the same as when my car was brand new, even though I've got 100,000 kilometers driven. How did that happen? Well, it's quite simple. That means that the degradation that's happened in my battery pack is in the unusable portion of the battery, and that's what's above the 100% that the car reserves. So it's all good news for me, because that means that I still have my 450-ish kilometers of summer driving range, and my 350-ish kilometers of winter driving range. So there you go. Now what about that screen that I said was my, my favorite screen of this device? It's your average power use of your current drive. Now, your Kia or Hyundai or Genesis eGMP platform vehicle will show your average power use over the last few hundred kilometers of driving. And that's not instantaneous average, if you can say that, because it's never instantaneous if it's average, but this screen will actually show you the average power use over the last 30 minutes and 50 kilometers of driving. That means that you might have one number on your dash, but this device will show you what your current driving session is like. Now the device will learn the driving style and average in the first five drives that last 30 minutes or more so that you get an exact idea of what your range is going to be. So your average power consumption on this device right now is showing me 18.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers as opposed to my car, which is currently showing zero because I'm not driving. But this is really cool because it calculates it on your actual drive, meaning that the range that's guessed or the guessometer that's on this device, as opposed to the ones in the car, is going to be different because this is showing you what it's going to be based on how you're driving now, not how you've driven over the last few hundred kilometers. It's a very accurate screen, and I think it's going to be something that's very useful. I love it, and it's made it so that I want to actually have this device right in front of me all the time, and I'll show you where I'm going to install it and how I'm going to run the wire so that it doesn't really show because I think this is definitely a screen that I would use on a regular basis. All versions of the EV6, including the 2026, have this nice empty space between the two screens. Perfect to position the EV OBD2 to be able to see it. Just plug in your USB-C cable, peel off the protective backing from the sticker, position it to the left edge of the right-hand screen, and press firmly. Run your wire along the bottom edge of the instrument cluster, and then through the steering column down to the USB-C port. And then you're done. You get to see your EV OBD2, great visibility, and it's out of the way. So why would you buy an EV OBD2 adapter for your Hyundai, Kia, or Genesis electric vehicle? Well, there's some information in here that's actually pretty interesting and a screen like I showed you that I would use on a regular or daily basis with that average consumption screen. And it's just for the fact that you can see your battery's state of health, and all of this can be done without using your cell phone. You don't need to have your cell phone jacked up on your dash and mess around with apps or pay for paid screens that you can't get for free. All of that from a local Quebecer who invented this device for his Hyundai Kona just to help himself. And he sells it for what I consider not enough money. 
especially considering that the updates that you're gonna get are only 10 bucks for the life of this device. If you wanna get one of these, I'll have links in the description below for you to go check it out. You're helping a local guy who developed this with a lot of time and effort and testing, and it's something that I think that you'll find very useful. Now, with that being said, we do have social media links, and I'll have those in the description as well, and somewhere up here on the screen for you to see. But more importantly, if you could click that subscribe button, because if you wanna get more information about electric vehicles from, let's say, Audi, Porsche, Rivian, and any other major auto manufacturer, well, the number of subscribers tells them that you're a big deal and maybe they should consider you. And we've got a 20,000 subscriber goal. If you could help us by clicking on that subscribe button and because YouTube won't tell you when new videos come out unless you click on that notification bell, well, click on all notifications because we have zero posting schedule. And David and I would also like to say thank you for taking the time to watch our videos. What do you do, Andre? What am I doing? I'm not having fun. <laughs> oh, son of a... Oh. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's really funny. Oh. <sighs> Fortunately, they put a Kia grab handle. <sighs> that didn't work. <laughs> it's gonna look good. I don't think it's worth doing. Just put the wire down the side. Who cares? The things I do to make videos. Now, to plug this in, you need to know where your Bluetooth adapter. You need to know where your Bluetooth adapter is. It's in my hand, right here. So you don't need to know where this is. You need to know where that is. So let's start over. And this is why it takes forever to make videos at my house. Monster number one. Don't eat that. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I have to talk. <laughs>